My name is Warren Bobro, and I've written a book called Cannabis Cocktails. What I'm trying to do here is something that hasn't been done before. People have written books about all different things in cocktail mixology, but they haven't written a book on mixology with cannabis yet. And so I wanted to take you through some of the basic uh, means that I determined to create this book called Cannabis Cocktails, which we will be giving away. Uh, how are we doing this, Derek? This the uh, the Cannabis Cocktails? We're giving away a copy of my book. I don't know if it's signed or or something. After the shakeup. After the shakeup. Go to the uh, Tales 365 Facebook page and you can enter for a chance to win. Yes, Derek from Common Man Cocktails. Thank you. Yep. So I wrote a book called Cannabis Cocktails, Mocktails and Tonics. And what I tried to do is not create the typical stoner book, which is there are plenty of them out there on the market, but I wanted to kind of unleash the power of the early apothecary. And when I was down in New Orleans last year at Tales of the Cocktail, I did a book signing at the Apothecary Museum, and I was really surprised to see a setup right next to me showing early apothecary ingredients and how they're used in the early apothecary, and I discovered that they use cannabis. And that got my brain thinking, and I thought, you know what, if they were using cannabis back in the late 1800s, early 1900s in the early apothecary, there had to have been something to it. Not all the things that they made in the apothecary had, uh, had medicinal value. A lot of it was what we call snake oil. But, uh, but some of it did actually work. And what I'm doing over here is uh, a little fast forwarding. I'm infusing some cannabis in some beautiful Bar Hill gin. I'm gonna make a cocktail with it a little later. And then I have a portion of, uh, of nice high quality weeds here, cannabis that I've going to decarb. <laughs> I was going to decarb. I decarbed the, you know, the portion that was right here and it's in the container. But this gives you an idea that everything should be measured out by weight and an amount. And usually it's, uh, I usually about seven, between seven and 14 grams per bottle of, of liquor. So what I wanted to try to accomplish was how you make the product, you know, psychoactive. And that would be the, the feeling that you get when you would either smoke marijuana or uh, smoke cannabis or, or even, you know, eat it in an edible. And not everyone wants to eat pot brownies all day. So what I tried to do is c not confuse the issue, but I wanted to release the psychoactive properties of the cannabis and infuse it into bourbon whiskey in this case. Or I have a little container of gin here infusing. And I wanted to create a cocktail with it, actually two cocktails. But the idea with the decarbing is to release the molecule A from THC. I'm not a scientist, I can't tell you exactly what that means, but I can tell you it gives you that feeling that you're looking for when you want to have the good feeling that's involved with making a cannabis cocktail. But why cannabis? Why, why is cannabis more important than say, and of the, any of the other herbs or spices that we use in the cocktail lounge. Well, it's every bit as important as the herbs and spices that you use in a cocktail lounge. And I have a selection of cocktail bitters in front of me. Some of them may or may not have cannabis in them. I can't tell you that. But I can tell you that there's the potential for that use, and it would add a lot of uh, flavor and balance and aromatics and all the different things that we look for in a craft cocktail. So I don't have a microwave down here, but I was going to be using a microwave for the, uh, for the decarb, but I'm going to give you the approximation. You would take a portion of the cannabis and you put it into a container, a microwave-proof container, like this one, and you put it inside and then nuke this in the microwave. I love using a microwave because it's, it has a lot of power to it and it does your job very quickly. There are a couple different methods of doing it, but I'm going to tell you about the, the, uh, the microwave one first. You would put it in a microwave-proof container, perhaps wrap it in what we call a turkey roasting bag. I did have one here, but that's okay. And that would hold in all the flavors and all the aromas. It keeps your entire house from smelling like a, uh, like a weed factory. And then uh, you, you nuke it for a minute and a half, three times. So that, what that does is it decarbs the cannabis and makes it active. 
After it goes into the, the decarb process, you would charge it. And I learned this from a guy named Dave Arnold. I saw that he was infusing herbs. I thought, why couldn't you infuse cannabis? I would put that decarbed cannabis inside my Whippet container, my ISI, with liquor, and it would go into a double boiler, which I have an induction burner here. Very important to not use gas. It's extremely important not to use a gas stove. Alcohol is extremely flammable. You can be the person that they remember when you blow up your whole house forever. So I always use the, uh, the induction or an electric cooktop. This is a portion of gin that has decarbed cannabis in it, and it infuses in the double boiler for about 45 minutes to an hour, and it makes a really, really nice, nice product at the end. Do you have to decarb? Not necessarily. For some of the health benefits, people don't decarb at all, and they just put the, you know, the cannabis directly into their liquor, and what they turn out to be having is a soupy mess. It doesn't have any of the flavor, it doesn't have any of the color, and it doesn't have any of the intensity. The other uh, method that I learned about was, and that I wrote about in my book, was the decarb method by using heat. And you would do that in a toaster oven or a regular oven on a, uh, on a toaster plate or on some type of container that you would close up to keep the valuable terpenes, which are the aromatics in the, in the bottle or in, in, the, in the cannabis. And then what would happen is you would cook it for about 240 degrees for an hour to release those positive uh, you know, parts of the cannabis, which allows it to be infused. And you can infuse all different types of things. In my book, I infused uh, coconut water, I infused coconut milk, I infused butter, I infused oils, I infused all different liquors. Um, I did bitters, I did shrubs, I did tonics. How are you doing here? Doing okay? okay? Yep. We're Indeed. having a lot of fun here. We're, yeah. uh, well, we're, do you want to do questions and answers during the middle of the fluidly or yeah, at the end? I would, love to, I would love to answer some questions. I see there's some questions there. I, don't, yeah. I can't really read them. I'm okay, explain the term decarb. That's a, that's a great question. Uh, decarbing is releasing the molecule A from THC, which makes the cannabis active. What it means to be active is it gives you that feeling that people accompany with smoking marijuana or enjoying a, uh, a cocktail that's made with it. So you get a, a different feeling. I can't tell you what that feeling is because it changes from person to person, but it definitely is the pleasurable aspect of using cannabis in a mixed drink. Do you want me to ask you the you next question? You me the next question. Certainly. The next one was, um, are there ways to infuse without using the double boiler? Double boiler. Uh, are there ways to infuse without using a double boiler? Yes. Um, if you don't have a double boiler at your disposal and only an oven, you can do this in the oven but make sure it's not a gas oven and it's an electric oven. Uh, I haven't really experimented with that method and I don't recommend it until you really know what you're doing because you, there's nothing worse than an explosion with alcohol. And that's why we're doing our double boiler in open containers away from an open flame using an induction cooktop. These are only about you know fifty or a hundred dollars. They're not very expensive. I, think I paid sixty for that. Sixty dollars for that. It's not very expensive to make sure that you're not blowing up your house and your neighbor's house as well. Um, uh, why use a cracker in a double boiler rather than just a beaker? Uh, I'm using a, a beaker. I you know I don't want to have the uh, the liquid in constant contact with you know even though it's in glass, but I don't want it to be. I don't know. I don't want it to get wet. I like having the, just the steam. It's a little more controllable. You know, experimentation is everything in this, and I'm not saying that, that my way is the only way. There are many different ways. I also do a decarb in a sous vide. I do it in a, uh, you know, in plastic and hold it under water at 212 degrees for about two hours, and it decarbs that way, and then you don't have to have any smell whatsoever. But uh, sometimes what, what happens is if you do a decarb and you live in an apartment, Make sure you do it with all the windows open because your house is going to smell very suspect. Really? Questions again? Nope, you, you're good to go for now. Good for now. Yep. Okay, so the, uh, the next thing that we would do is you would, chart, you would put your decarbed cannabis inside the, the ISI. You would charge it twice with the, you know, with the nitrous oxide. 
And what that's supposed to do, from what I learned, is it micro-encapsulates the CHC into each of the, the bits of, uh, of alcohol. And you would never fill this up more than 0.5 liters so it doesn't explode again. And it, it's supposed to infuse the, uh, the cannabis into the, or the THC into the liquor at a very, you know, very intense rate because it's that forcing of the nitrous oxide into the uh, alcohol with the herbs which creates the flavor. And then to activate it, it needs to be physically cooked in just boiling water for about an hour. And I really like that method. And it gives me a, a very, you know, a really nice end result. So why cannabis? Why cannabis? Um, cannabis is something that people have used for healing purposes. They use it for relaxation purposes. I think there's 400 some odd different uh, things that it's supposed to alleviate. I can't tell you that cannabis is going to cure all of your ills, but I can tell you that it's certainly going to make someone feel better no matter what they do. Maybe it's my gnome Klaus, I'm not quite sure. But there is a, there's a lot of things that you can do with it as a cocktail ingredient. So one of the things that I was going to do was I was going to take some of the, uh, the barrel bourbon that I infused with cannabis and I was going to make a little bit of a mus like a Moscow mule with a little bit of ginger beer. So let's get a little bit of ice here. And, uh, you need a cup of lime. What's that? You need a cup of lime. Yeah, I'd love a couple of cup of lime. So that'd be great. Okay, just so going to put some cubes in here. Uh, something that's very important to stress that when you're making a cannabis cocktail, when you're making cannabis cocktails, you don't want to make them too strong because there is something in there that's active. So I think measurement is all very, very important. And this, uh, this cocktail I'm going to do with about, I don't know, an ounce of the infused barrel bourbon whiskey. And it's, uh, I'm kind of working a little bit far away from the menu, but I'm going to use a little bit of the Frutations uh, Pure Bottled Grapefruit, which is a beautiful little product. And I do have permission to use it with cannabis, which is nice. Lime you need? Uh, just a couple slices of lime. So I'm going to stir that up together, pour it over the ice, close it up, give it a nice little shake. Beautiful thing. Look. Look at that, a Moscow Mule mug. I, I figure if you're going to do it, you've got to go, gotta all, the go all the way. And are these available here at Common Man Cocktails? You can get those at awesomedrinks.com. Awesomedrinks.com, there it is. So we're pouring the, uh, this is the base of the mule into the Moscow Mule cup. And then I've got a little bit of, uh, of fresh lime, beautifully cut by my intrepid team back there. Squeeze some of that in here. And that ginger beer yes, is, you is nearby. Too. I'd love to have one of those ginger beers. I guess. So you see, there's really no mumbo jumbo here. I'm just using ingredients that may or may not be charged with cannabis. You can make any of the cocktails in my book with it or without it. It's okay. But I, guess the, the, I would love a ginger beer. Still? Still, yeah. <laughs> I don't know, maybe we can use, we can always do it with the seltzer water. No, no, That'd be fun too. I just thought I had one right here. Ah, oh, there it is. The ginger beer. Thank you. So we're going to add the ginger beer to the cocktail. And yes, Warren, you could get that at the same place. Okay. And I'm going to finish it off with some bitters. Let's see. I, have, I took some uh, bitters and, bitter end Moroccan bitters recently and I did some infusing with them. So I'm going to put a couple drops of that on top. So you're going to get some different layers of flavor. And there it is. It's a uh, sort of a Moscow Mule with barrel bourbon whiskey, Q ginger beer, and uh, bitter end Moroccan bitters that have been uh, slightly tweaked. Do we get to drink it? There you this? go. You get to drink it. You get to tell me what it tastes Come on, like. Ian, where are you going? So that should be a pretty good cocktail. And it'll have nice flavors. It'll have nice aromas. It has um, it has sort of an herbal flavor. It's kind of tasty. Kind of like, like, but near the end, after 
couple of sips, when you get that spicy ginger, mm -hmm. it's not all just spicy ginger. It's There's spicy like a, ginger and the cannabis like flavor. Like an herbal... Um, or like an herbal flavor, like, like why we use bitters in cocktails. Mm. To add balance and add depth. And we like doing things like that. Let me taste one of those. You want more, yeah, right? Well, I just want to have a little taste of that. While you're tasting it, I got a question for That's you. That's a delicious, delicious drink. I recommend this to anyone, especially someone who's a neophyte like myself. Uh, a what? A neophyte. <laughs> um, how about direct infusion into the spirit right after decarbing the microwave? Yeah, is you, heat necessary? Uh, heat is necessary to do the infusion, yes. Otherwise, it'll just be uh, decarb uh, cannabis sitting in a, in a solution. It has to be physically infused, by, mm -hmm. and that happens by heat. And the, the temperature that I recommend doing it, that I found in my experimentation that worked best, was approximately 160 degrees Fahrenheit, and the water should be approximately 212. And then if it gets too hot, you can just remove it from the water, let it cool a little bit, and then it goes back in again. So it's about 45 minutes to an hour. I think that's probably about time yeah. now for that one. Yeah, that's right that's on time. That's right on time. So I'm going to take this infusion. I've got this beautiful little jelly bag here, which I love. And it makes my life a lot easier, and I stick it right into, the, uh, right into a Boston shaker. I'm going to take the uh, Bar Hill Gin, or the gin that I have, and pour it into this jelly bag. Okay, I see this. There it is. It's hard to throw. It's, it's hot. <laughs> that's, <laughs> yeah. that's why I have a glove here, but, I, wasn't, but I really wasn't paying attention. Put so. your cell phone on right, it. Right, my cell phone is on it, which is usual. So I've got this glove, which came with my magical butter machine, which is something I also have but we're not using it today. So, we've got the weeds, putting it into the infusion. Get all that good stuff out of there. And now I squeeze it to get as much of the liquid out as possible. You, you don't want to get this on your skin. If you get it on your skin, you, you could potentially take too much of it at any given time. And if you overdose on cannabis, you'll know what I'm talking about. It's a bad feeling. It's not a, a, you know, something that's going to kill you necessarily, but you're not going to feel very good. So my friend Jerry Whiting, who wrote the, uh, the intro and forward to my book, told me that if you drink down a glass of freshly squeezed lemon juice and eat about three or four peppercorns that bad feeling that that you get when you, sometimes you take too much you know you mix too much liquor and, and cannabis it can happen and you'll know it when it when it hits you and it won't feel good but if you keep it in mind that that the the secret is to drink fresh lemon juice and peppercorns what that does is it mimics the terpenes in the cannabis and it counteracts it so I got my got almost all the liquid out of here now. There's a nice portion left. It has a beautiful color to it. And let's see, that actually tasted pretty good on my tongue. Uh, here, I'm gonna take that. So I'm gonna pour the, the this infused liquid, which is kind of brownish color, because I decarbed a little bit too much, I think. But I don't know, let's see. So here it is. There's the uh, Normally I wouldn't do things in gin again because the color is, is pretty, you know, rambunctious, it's dark. Um, I would run this through, a pure, you know, like one or two coffee filters, but the flavor is all there and it's going to be quite amazing because I'm going to mix up a little, a little gin and tonic of sorts. So let me get some more ice here. Any more, do we have any more questions or anything yes. fun? Uh, well, I might answer this one first. Uh, what kind of tasting notes and aroma does it add? It adds very green tasting notes and green aromas like the smell of cannabis. And I find that to be quite beguiling. I like that smell. It adds depth, it adds color, it adds dimension. And it, it's an unknown cocktail ingredient that people just don't know anything about because there's certain legality problems perhaps. I'm going to use a little uh, Royal Rose simple syrup of three chilies. So this is uh, poblano, 
ancho and jalapeno chili. So that's going to add a little, in about two seconds. If I shake it up with that on there, it's going to be a big, a big mess. I just wasn't sure if it was one of the key ingredients to your next it, madness. It, it is, it is, it's, it is my madness. Speaking okay. of that, somebody asked, um, what is your best, favorite recipe in the book? My favorite recipe in the book is probably one of the hot buttered rums with, uh, with can of butter. And it's just a delicious drink. So this is going to be the base of the gin and tonic with a little bit of royal rose simple syrup with three chilies. Okay, that's our base. We have one of those. Oh, actually, you know what? I'm going to do this in a coop. You want a coop? Yeah, I'm going to do have, it in a coop. I've got the coop right here. You got the size. I've got the size. So that's here's my coop. <laughs> well, we could see. So here's the little coop. You can see the greenery in there. Add a little bit of uh, Q tonic water gets this beautiful milky color when you add water to it or of any kind. And then one of those little fresh lime squeezes here. And if you're feeling really creative, you could probably garnish it with a little piece of, of weed on it. I probably wouldn't. I don't know. Maybe I was going to take a little bit of uh, overproof rum and shoot it over the top. There we go. So we have a beautiful little cocktail made with cannabis. I'm going to taste it. That is absolutely delicious. Taste that. And tell me what you think. Okay. It's, it's a lot greener you say so. tasting than the, uh, than the barrel. It's a lot greener tasting. But it's really alive. It's really, oh, it's, the, it's vibrant. The tonic is kind of, it light, it, it lightens it, it up. It feels like it's going to be a little sweeter and a little mm -hmm. heavier and then it just kind of springs to life. It's kind of weird. But it's a, it's a drink that you probably, you know, again, I'm going to take this and filter it but it, it's not going to be as clear as gin would be it's got a little bitterness to it but too. it's got a little bitter edge to it it's it's really really nice it's a nice way of building a cocktail in a way that you might not necessarily feel like you want to do it um, I do have to stress certain legal points you're probably not going to be doing this in, in your cocktail bar anytime soon unless you have it under the counter I would not recommend saying oh I have the weed vodka here or the weed gin, I think that's a really bad idea and it sends the wrong impression. What I'm trying to achieve by writing my book was giving a different way of looking at ingredients that we're familiar with and using cannabis as, as a health tonic, as a health serum, if you will. Uh, my first book, Cannabis Cocktails, kind of touches on that. Uh, and the only ingredient that I really, that they really used in the early apothecary, which we don't really use today at all because of the public stigma against it is cannabis and cannabis was probably the only ingredient in the early apothecary that really worked but they didn't know why it worked but we know why it works and we're rediscovering every day why it works and finding that it works all too well so book. many of you yeah apothecary cocktails there oh, we are that. yeah here's the book so my first book apothecary cocktails was written you know a couple of years ago and then I, of course, Cannabis Cocktails is meant to take you where Apothecary Cocktails left off. And certainly the ingredient that I did not include in Apothecary Cocktails was cannabis. Because I don't think America was, was ready for it yet. And I really don't think that they, uh, they knew what was going on and they knew that, that it had healing properties and that, that people are starting to relax a little bit about the, the raw ingredients and not being quite so paranoid that it's gonna lead to harder drugs. And I really wanted to stress very, very, very strongly that, uh, that you don't want to drink more than one of these drinks per hour. It's not like you can sit down and pound five drinks in an hour and say, you know, why isn't this hitting me? Because it takes a while and everyone's body is different and everyone assimilates cannabis in a different manner. And they all, they want to make sure that they do things in a way that they kind of, uh, it changes up the way that, that you feel about liquor and you don't want to be drinking, you know, power drinking anything with cannabis in it. And I tried to write the book from a perspective of healing. So I think that's very important to stress that you don't want to drink too much too quickly.
Do all cannabis-infused spirits loosh when water that is? Yeah, they do. They really do. They, they get a little bit creamy colored. Uh, the gin is probably a, not such a great example because I wasn't able to filter it. I didn't bring my coffee filters. And, you know, so this is about 150 ml. And it probably, at the end of the, of the process, would probably be about, a, mm. I don't know, 125 ml. Some, a lot of it stays inside the coffee filter. But, uh, but that doesn't necessarily mean just because it's unattractive, it doesn't have the active ingredients. It absolutely has the active ingredients. But so it does loosh when it hits, when you do put water in it. I uh, infused a bottle of, uh, of Cuvée uh, Edouard, of the uh, Edouard uh, Absinthe, and that came out just about as green and vegetal as you can imagine, and it had the most incredible aroma and flavor. But it, from a you know aesthetic point point of view, it wasn't so great. Um, in my experimentation, I found that uh, that whiskey or dark rum was the best thing to infuse because it really didn't show poorly. But light liquors like gin or vodka, not so much. Uh, Warren, your amount seven to fourteen grams cannabis to seven fifty ml liquor mm -hmm. seems too high to me. No pun. <laughs> <laughs> Given the availability these days, what are the THC content ranges? Um, of the strains you're using? Uh, the ones that I use run anywhere from 14% THC up to about 21% THC. Uh, you have to let your body be the guide. Uh, there is no uh, written, you know, I know I'm going to catch a lot of flack for this, but there's no written recipes. You have to kind of use my recipes as the starting point. And the reason for that is that my starting point was very, very light. Some of the uh, recipes that I've seen on the internet have been incredibly potent. People have been taking as much as uh, an ounce of uh, cannabis per 750 ml bottle. I would do that as a tincture. I probably wouldn't do that as an infusion. In infusion, you don't want to have quite so much potency in any one drink. So although this is you know, 150 ml of concentrated liquor, I might want to add this back into my bottle and then top it off, you know, up to 750 ml. So it would be something like, you know, it would go into the larger flask and then I would top it off with gin and I'd get a, you know, it wouldn't be quite as concentrated. So once it comes out of the heat, it's quite concentrated. Uh, I've got it. Will it be okay to use one of your recipes in a book in a review? Uh, it's and they're really looking forward to the book. They're uh, they're so do you give them r permission to use one of your cocktail recipes in a, a review? Uh, I absolutely give you permission to, to review my book and to do anything that you want with it. I would say give me a call or give, send me an email so I can get you in touch with my publisher so I can you know get you a, a copy of it you know of the book before it, it releases perhaps or at least an e-copy so you have an idea of what I tried to write. Um, how many cocktails can I drink with cannabis and still be able to drive legally? Uh, you, you probably would not want to drive legally when imbibing any cannabis cocktails. I would imagine that the same amounts of liquor of having done just on my serve safe training, uh, you know, liquor is problematic and the cannabis makes it even more problematic. So I would say have someone else do the driving for you. Do you uh, donate tequila infusions? Yeah, I, you know what? I, I tequila actually, infusion yeah, question. Tequila infusion question. There you go. Have I done any tequila infusions? Uh, in the book I did mezcal infusions because I find that the mysterious nature of mezcal lends itself extremely well to the use of cannabis and cocktails. From a flavor perspective, absolutely. Absolutely. From an aroma perspective, absolutely. Um, I couldn't tell you that if I had something the matter with me, I don't. But I couldn't <laughs> tell you that it, it would cure this, this, or this. But what I can tell you is it may alleviate certain symptoms that you have. If you have glaucoma, for instance, I do know that, that, it, that cannabis acts as some sort of guide to relieving your your you know, difficulties with glaucoma. I know that I people have certain types of, <laughs> certain types of, uh, of um, seizures. Cannabis is able to alleviate certain types of seizures. There's, there's like 400 different properties for, for healing. So I thought, why not take those positive things rather than the negative things and try to make it, weave it into a cocktail. So any kind of liquor that you have, including the cream liquors, 
works very, very well. And the cream liquors actually work better because cannabis doesn't bind to water, it binds to a fatty substance. With that said, the infusion process that we do allows it to bind to the water. But if you did a, you know, a cream-based liquor, or, you know, like a Bailey's Irish cream or something, you know, just, just saying, um, it would work really, really nicely because of the fact that it's a fatty substance. But mezcal works beautifully because it's mysterious. Yeah. It's, got it has, it's got the smoke. It has the char. It has, you know, there's all these different types of, of mezcal from different villages. They all have their different flavors. And each type of cannabis is different as well. So you have, in my book, I have 75 different drinks. Each one has a different strain meant to heal or alleviate, pardon me. They're meant to alleviate a certain ill or a certain complaint. But then at the end of the day, what, what we're trying to do is introduce new flavors, new smells, you know, new aromas, new depth to your craft cocktails. Again, I don't recommend you doing this in the cocktail bar. You're on your own as far as that's concerned. <laughs> People have asked me where to get weed. I say, make friends with a teenager or uh, what was the other thing? You know, get, you know, move to Colorado, get a medical, Washington. you know, get a, a cannabis card in whatever state you, you live in where it's permitted. But I couldn't tell you that it's legal. It's not. I'm doing something that's on the periphery of badness. <laughs> and I don't mean to be a bad person. I wanted to offer something that was different. And I hope I don't get into too much trouble along the way. But I don't think so. I really don't think so. I think times are changing. And I think that the uh, perspective is to look for new flavors and new techniques as opposed to dwelling on uh, the sticky little things like getting arrested. <laughs> um. I'm questioning how long does it take? How long does it take cannabis effect to kick in? Also, does Good. it pair with the alcohol effect? Uh, that that's a great question. I was hoping someone would answer. It would ask me that. It takes with the infusions. It takes approximately ten to as much as an hour for it to take to hit you. And the other one, what the other part of the question was? How does it pair with the alcohol it, effect? It, it pairs beautifully. In fact, it makes alcohol effect minimized. I can't believe I just said that, but it's true. It minimizes the effect of the alcohol. So you get a feeling that you can drink your buddies under the table, and you probably can, but I don't recommend it. <laughs> and again, if you end up taking too much or overdosing yourself on cannabis, and you'll know it when you do it because it's like, your worst nightmare, essentially. And you say that's why you want to really ratchet back the amounts and definitely don't drink five drinks in an hour. And if you do, you drink that fresh squeezed lemon juice and chew the peppercorns and be relaxed. Be really relaxed because like anything, you don't want to drink too much and you certainly don't want to take too much cannabis and you don't want to do anything in extreme. I, I come from the school of thought that you want to do everything in moderation. So you have your first drink, then you wait about an hour or so, and then you might have a second drink. But I really don't think of, of, of power drinking. I don't think that the cannabis cocktails would necessarily be a good idea for, uh, for shots. I think that's a, that sends the wrong image. We're not trying to portray that. Again, when I first took this idea to, to Anne, you know, and I said, Anne, you know, I'm thinking of writing this book, and, or I, I've written this book, what do you feel about it? And I do believe that Anne said very specifically, I don't know about this, <laughs> but I really wanted to prove that it didn't, ha it wasn't something to be afraid of. It was something to be challenged in the sense that it offers flavors that we're just not accustomed to, and it offers techniques that we don't have a, the ability of saying, oh, I did that because most people have not done this. I think there's a lot of fear involved with it because people would think that, Gosh, you know, I, I've had a bad experience where I drank a, dra a drink and smoked a joint and I've never felt so sick in my life. There is that possibility, but that's why I, in my recipes, I ratcheted back the intensities way, way, way back. And, you know, anyone with a half of a brain can see the, the book and, and look at the recipes and say, okay, if I really want to get wasted, what am I going to do? Everything's in here. You can do it. I don't recommend it, but it can be done. But really, the, the terminology for this book is healing, not obliteration. So that's really important. I would have had to